Hey, welcome to Rise Church. Thanks so much for joining us online today. We believe that Jesus wants to do so much for you and through you, and we'd love to hear how he's working in your life. Please take a second to email your story to stories at rise-church.com. We hope you leave today feeling encouraged and uplifted. Enjoy the message. Absolutely, I did, sweetheart. Absolutely. Hey, come on, we're continuing our series that my wife kicked off so wonderfully last week. Come on, I hope you've been walking in the peace of God that is available to you. We're calling this series One Word That Could Change Your Life. This is our summer series. We're running this series through the entire month of June and July, so make sure you're here. If you're not here, you're out of town, catch up with us online, hang out with us as our online family. But I wanna emphasize this word right here, could. One word that could change your life, not will change your life, because I could give you a thousand words that, that, that could change your life, but not of all, all of them will change your life because it's only gonna change your life if you apply it to your life. So, so my wife taught on peace last week. That word peace is only gonna change your life if you apply it and you walk in the peace of God and you pursue God and you set your mind on the things of God. You're not gonna have peace pursuing everything else other than God. And so today I wanna teach on this word, trust. And this word can only change your life if you let it. Amen? There's an old verse in the Psalms that says it like this. You're gonna love this verse. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. How many of you got chariots and horses in your backyard? Okay, okay, I'll explain that to you. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. In, in the days of David and, and, and in the wars and everything that was going on back then, it was whoever had more chariots and whoever had more horses equaled a stronger army that was probably gonna win the battle. We, we don't have that today. But, but what, what the writer is saying here is, it don't matter how many horses you got, it don't matter how many chariots you have, if you don't have the Lord your God on your side, you got nothing. And we only need to read through the Bible of the people of Israel that were always outnumbered and outmanned, but because God was on their side, they were able to step in and win multiple battles. So some are gonna put their trust in this, but we, and we know better, we put our, our trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Some trust in money. Let's, let's make it in today's world. But we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Some, some trust in people, relationships, government, and, 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 and people are great. But, but we, at the end of the day, come on, we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. Can I get a better amen? amen. It's one word that could change your life, people. If you don't trust in God, man, your life's not, it's not gonna change actually probably gonna get worse. Psalm says it like this, is the writer of Psalms. He says, but I trust in your what? Unfailing love. You wanna put your trust in something that's not gonna fail you? It's the love of God. It's unfailing. It can't fail you. It's always there. God always has more love to pour out. I will rejoice, come on somebody, because you have rescued me. That was your opportunity to rejoice right there. Let's run it back one more time. I'm gonna trust in your unfailing love. Aren't you grateful for a God who didn't give up on you? Raise your hand if you've ever committed the same sin twice. Only twice, right? Not three times, not four times. That sin that you've committed over and over and the Lord didn't look down at you and go, ah, I'm done with them. That unfailing love is for you. And, and, and so, so, so I have a response now. I got, I got something that needs to happen. So, so because of your unfailing love, I can't help it. Come on, somebody. I haven't preached for two weeks, man. I'm excited to be back. I feel like y'all aren't excited. Because of your unfailing love, I will rejoice because you have rescued me. Come on, I was stuck in my sin. I couldn't get out. And you redeemed me and rescued me. Are you kidding me? Come on, that's the God that we serve. Come on, let me give you one more. Those who know your name, ooh, do you know his name? Come on, he ain't the big guy in the sky. Come on, Ricky Bobby, he ain't eight pounds, six ounce, baby Jesus. <laughs> Those who know your name, trust in you. For you, oh Lord, you do not abandon those who search for you. Come on, this is good stuff this morning. I feel like, I feel like our faith is getting stirred. I feel like, oh yeah, that's the God I can put my trust in. Here's the reality, at the end of the day, for you and for me, raise your hand, actually, let's do this. Raise your hand if you've got trust issues with people. Why do you have trust issues? Because at some point, people give you a reason not to trust them, right? 
At some point, somebody let you down. At some point, somebody abandoned you. At some point, somebody wasn't there for you when you needed them. They promised you something, and they did not come through on that promise. Therefore, now you have trust issues. Trust takes time to build. When you meet a new person in your life, you don't automatically just trust them. Let me, let me talk to somebody. They're like, but I'm so, I, I trust people. Stop, okay? <laughs> don't trust them until you get to know them because you can't trust everybody, but they said that they were kind. No, that's not always the reality. Get to know them, then you'll realize, oh yeah, that's who they are. The same is true with God. You understand that, right? If you don't know him, you're not gonna be able to trust him. If you don't really know him, you can't really trust him. Has somebody ever told you, you gotta go see this movie, it's incredible, and then you pay like $50 to go to the movies, and, and, and the movie was terrible. You're like, why did you tell me to go see that? That was the worst movie. You will never trust their movie again. You'll never, if they say, go eat at this restaurant, oh man, it was so good, and you go eat at that restaurant, you're like, that, was, that restaurant was terrible. Why did you tell me? You're not gonna trust them in the future with God. You have to understand, when you know him, you'll know that he's trustworthy. If you don't know that God is, is good, then you're gonna think that every bad thing in your life comes from God. You're gonna think every bad thing that happens in your life is God punishing you. But you gotta know that he's good. If you don't know that God's faithful, you're gonna think in your mind that when things get a little bit tough that God's bailing on you. You gotta know he's faithful. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He doesn't run out when things get tough. Other people maybe bailed on you. Other people maybe abandoned you when things got tough. Maybe other people turned their back on you and rejected you, but, but God doesn't. He, he's faithful. If, if you don't know that God is strong, then you're gonna look at every situation in your life as, oh, well, how am I gonna get through this? You're gonna get through it with the power of Jesus. I don't know how you're gonna get through it. I don't know how long it's gonna take you to get through it, but if God is on your side, then who can be against you? But if, but if you don't know that, then you're gonna, you're gonna waver at every turn. And for you and for me, we've gotta get to the bottom of this of, God, who are you? Like, God, do I really know who you are? And when it comes to God, here's what you need to know. God's character is that he is trustworthy, meaning he is worthy of your trust. And he has built that in, get this, God's track record is that he is trustworthy. So he has built it in with his, if you go on God's past, if you go to Wikipedia and look up God's track record, it's one of faithfulness. It's one of strength. It's one of goodness. Get off of Wikipedia. You can't trust all of that. Open up the word of God, somebody. Oh, how did God come through for Moses? And how did he come through for Abraham? And how did he come through for David? And how did he come through for Mary? How did he come through for these people in the Bible? Like the same way he's gonna come through for you. He, he's, he's, he's trustworthy and, and, and trust, it could change your life if you let it. So, so right now, that situation we prayed for earlier, are you trusting God with it? And, and if you're not, why aren't you? And I think we can all relate. I love this this story in the Bible of a dad who's got a son that's just being tormented by the devil. And maybe this isn't your specific situation, but, but you got something going on right now in your own life. And let's, let's be honest, some of you, it's the enemy that's coming after you right now. And he's trying to get you to doubt God, and he's trying to get you to question if God's real and if God cares about you. It says, Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has your son been like this? It's a little crazy. I wanna ask some of y'all, I walk through by his kids sometimes, I'm like, How long have they been like that? <laughs> the ones that are laughing are like, that's my kid. He's talking about my kid right now. <laughs> it's actually been from childhood. Like, it, it's, it's been since he was young. It's often actually thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. Like, this, this is real. This, this is torment. This is the dad. This is honest. Honest dad moment right here. Hey, but if you can do anything... Can you just take pity on us and help us? I just need a little, like, I've been struggling. I, I, I can't help my son. Can you just take some pity on me? If, if you can do anything, can you, can you just help us just a little bit? Classic Jesus. If you can. If I, do you know who you're talking to right now, my brother? If, if you can, said Jesus. And this is a tricky verse right here, and I don't have time to unpack this. Everything is possible for the one who believes. 
And a lot of people will take that verse and they'll twist it and go, well, you just don't have enough faith. That's why it's not happening for you. That's not what Jesus is saying here. He's just saying, believe. I want you to believe. I want you to have faith that I can do everything, that I can do all things. It doesn't mean I'm gonna do it the way you want me to do it, but it means I have the power to do all things. Immediately, I love this. This is so honest. And some of you just need to get here today. And God's okay if you get here today. The boy's father exclaimed, I really do believe. Like, I really do believe, but, but there's a part of me. I need you to help me overcome my unbelief. Let's be real. Jesus, we know you can do all things. We really do trust you. But sometimes there's a part of us that just is struggling to fully, fully believe. And I want to read to you two verses of Scripture. I want to give you three points based off of these Scriptures. It's one of the first verses I ever learned when I became a Christian. I met some people in my life, and they're like, you need to learn this verse. This verse will be good for the rest of your life. I promise you this. Some of you got it on a coffee mug. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says it like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Look to him in all you do, and he will direct your path. Three points from this one, two verses right here. The first one is this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. When somebody doesn't give all, all their effort to something, we would say they're doing something half-hearted. There's another term we could use, but we're in church. And I knew it. I saw your faces. You're like, he's gonna say it. He's gonna say it right. We knew he would say something one day. He's doing it right now. Half-hearted. Some of you, let's be honest, you go to your job and you are half-hearted at your job. You don't, you don't get, because you don't love your job. Students, some of you don't give everything when you go to school. You're so grateful for summer right now. And when school rolls around, you're like, I'm not very excited. I'm, I'm, I'm there, but I'm not all there. I'm, half, I'm half-hearted. I'm When it comes to our trust in God, God says that half-hearted doesn't work. Because I want you to trust me with all of your heart. Because if you're only giving God half of your trust, that means you're giving half of your trust to something else. And for our relationship with God to work, God is inviting us in to fully trust him all the way. And so for you and for me, that just boils down to God. God, are you trustworthy? And He absolutely is. And God, are you gonna be with me through everything that I walk through in this specific circumstance? And the answer is, come on somebody, yes, he is, always. So God, I can trust you because you're trustworthy, and I don't wanna just give you a little bit of my trust, I wanna give you all of my trust. And this is how your life gets changed. When you stop just believing God a little bit and you say, God, here it is. And I think if you were honest in here and said, yeah, I trust God, but there's a part of me that doesn't, God's okay with you being there right now, but he doesn't want you to stay there. And just like this story of this son, like he, the, the, the dad saw a miracle happen, I guarantee you this, his faith was built. His trust was built. And the next thing he moved into in his life, he would have looked back on that moment and go, well, God, I could trust you there. Surely I can trust you here. So all I need you to do is go back to the last time that you went through something difficult that you needed to trust God in and go, oh, yeah, God, I trusted you here and you came through. You actually did it a little differently than I wanted you to, but it was better because everything God does is always, always better. If I, if I want some advice in my life, I want to go to somebody that cares about me. Because if they care about me, then, then the advice they give to me is going to be beneficial to me. If you need some advice in your life, you need some help, you need, you need to go to God because there is nobody on this planet that will care more about you than God does. He, he wants what's best for you. And get this, he knows what's best for you. He's not pacing up in heaven going, what am I going to do with them? This, this situation is just out of my hands. I did not see that coming. Oh, my goodness. He knows, right? So therefore, therefore, we can trust him. It's the devil that comes along and lies and says, no, you can't. Because God, God's not with you. He's abandoned you. He's given up on you. He doesn't care about you. And your lies are trying to steal your trust and your faith in the strong, mighty power of God. And this is the writer of, of Proverbs, one of the wisest guys, the Bible says, in, in, in all the Bible. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then the next words he says, I believe could be the wisest words ever written in the Bible. Because he says this, do not depend on your own understanding. 
How many of you have ever, ever depended on your own understanding? How'd that work out? But, but don't we do it again and again, right? We're, we're faced with a situation, and, and the first thing we do is, I gotta figure this out. What can I do here? What can I, how, like financially right now, like let's be real, like, okay, gas prices keep going up. So you have to, you have to like, you know, accustom your, your budget to that. One, I almost pr- preached on this. One word that could change your life, a budget, okay? But I, I'll do that another time. But that's spiritual, man. That'll help somebody change my life. So, so, if, so if, if the cost of living is going up, then you've got to change some stuff some of, over here. But, but our first reaction to like rising costs and different stuff like that is like, oh, I got to do this. I'm not going to do that. I got to, uh, uh, and, and yes, all that's good. But at the end of the day, we have to continue to say, God, like I trust you. Like you, you own everything. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hill. It means he, he, he owns the cattle and the hill. He owns it all. He is, your, he is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. If he, if he takes care of the birds, he's going to take care of you. Don't depend on your own understanding. Your, your understanding is so limited. Your understanding will, will make a mess of things because it has in the past. I'm going to invite my brother to come up and join me up on the stage. Can y'all give it up for him as he comes? This is my much older brother. Um, he just turned 40 last week. Come on, man. Well, he, looks, he looks good. He looks good. And uh, for this illustration specifically, um, this is the only time that I'm going to allow him to play God in my life. Okay? So he's going to be God, and I'm going to be Adam. And uh, when it comes to our lives, here's what the writer of of Proverbs was saying. He said, don't lean on your own understanding. So if my understanding is here, I'm going to lean on that. Here's what I think will work. I look a little drunk. I understand that. I'm good. Here's what I think is best for my life. And and it's going to get me to fall flat on my face. Don't lean on your understanding. Lean on God. Is he? I told him he had to bring the muscle today. Listen, is God moving right now? Am I moving? Because I'm leaning on him. And, and, and really, if we, if we took it to the, like, the next step, what the writer of Proverbs is really saying is to put all of your life, all of your heart, Give everything. Don't lean on your own understanding completely. (laughs) Completely. And at first, this feels a little uncomfortable, right? But then you start to just kind of nestle in and kind of just feel it. And 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 what I want you to do, I want you, because he's shaking right now. I want (laughs) I want you to burn this image into your mind. But the next time you have a trust thing that God says, I want you to jump into my arms and I will hold you. Thank you, God. <laughs> You're good. Because if, if you lean on yourself, I promise you this, it's, it's gonna get messier than you want it to be. But if you lean on God, it doesn't mean that it's just like a magic formula and everything's gonna get better. It means that you're putting your hope and your trust in something that you don't understand and you can't see and you don't know how it's going to work out, but you know that you can trust him and his understanding is greater than ours. And so I understand, like that was ridiculous, right? And, and some other people would look at you and go, it's ridiculous for you to trust God. It, it does seem a little foolish at times. We should do a whole series on that. It'd be awesome. <laughs> it is foolish to trust God. But let me, let me just ask you this question, like honestly, and we know the answer. Where else are we going to go? Like where, who else are we going to put our trust in? Because we put our trust in people and they let us down. We put our trust in ourselves. We made a mess of things. Like, God, your track record is that you're trustworthy. So that's where I'm going to put my trust. And then we close out with this, that we look to him in all our ways and he will direct your paths. Other translations say, acknowledge God in all your ways. Well, what are we acknowledging? that you're God and there's nobody like you. What are we doing? We're, we're looking to him at every area of our lives. We're looking to put our trust in God 
um, with our finances. We've talked about that. We're looking to trust in God with our family. We're looking to trust in God, come on, with our marriage. Your marriage doesn't need more of you. Your marriage needs more trust in God. I'm looking to trust in God with my children. Come on, summertime's already hit. My kids are driving me crazy. I know I'm driving them crazy. We have had some family meetings. Let's come to Jesus right now because somebody's not making it out of the Peterson household alive tonight. <laughs> and we've been talking to our children about what it means to, to have self-control and, and you can't do it on your own because yourself, when it comes out, it lashes out and it's angry. But self-control from the Holy Spirit responds with peace and with love. And my kids need that message and I need that message. But if I'm just trying to do it on my own, if I'm trying to parent my kids in my own understanding, well, this is what I think they need. They just need a good beating, man. They just need me to raise my voice at them. No, they don't. I asked my son last night, do you, do you think Jesus, if he was your dad, would respond the way I do sometimes? No, he wouldn't. So I, I, I don't need my understanding. I need Jesus. I need to look to him. I need to acknowledge God in my family in my marriage, in our church. Look to him in all my ways. And then, and then here's the promise. When I look to him, he's actually gonna direct my path. Here's how you should parent your kid, Adam. Here's how you should love your wife. Here's how you should lead your church. Here's how you should enter into this crazy political world that we live in where everybody's just hating each other. Here's how we lead right. Here's how we love. Here's how we shine the light of Jesus in the dark. I, I can't do that on my own. I don't know how to do that. That's why Jesus saved my life. Because I was making a mess of things. He's like, we need less of you. We need to get you out of the world. I need Jesus in you. That's what we need. To look to you, God, in all things. And, and, and then you show me how to do it. I got a coworker that drives me crazy. Okay, cool. God, how do I love them? I don't know. It's so hard to love them. Well, maybe God will show you. Are you trying to do it on your own? Because you, you can't. But if you look to God, he'll, he'll, he'll show you the path. You got a family member that drives you crazy? Welcome to the club. <laughs> if you don't have a family member that drives you crazy, you're the family member that's driving people <laughs> crazy. Hello. How do, how do I love? I, I look to God. I look to God. He, and he directs, he, this is the way to go. What, 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 what's, what's going on with my future? Maybe a different job. Like you're not gonna open the Bible and says, take this job. It's not gonna be there. But God, I'm gonna trust you. And as I trust you, you'll, you'll direct my path. You'll show me which, and, 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 and it's, it's, that's why it's called faith because it's not gonna be like, here, this is it. But if it, it's, it's, it's trust because God's trustworthy, amen? It's one word that could change your life, but you gotta live it out. So before we move any further, I am gonna go ahead and invite the band to come up right now. I want you to think about that one thing. I want you to think about that one area in your life where you're just kind of struggling right now to trust God. Or, or you are trusting God in some moments, but then you're kind of picking it back up yourself, or you're trying to figure it out over here, but then when you get in church, you're like, oh yeah, God, I can trust you. And what's that one thing? Because God's kind of put it on my heart lately to pastor a church where people are moving. I, I don't want you to stay where you are. I want, I want, I want to see movement in your life. And I, I want a, a week from now, a month from now, maybe even a year from now, for you to look back on this moment and go, I was struggling to trust you, God. I was trying to figure it out on my own, and I kind of kept just staying right where I was. But God, the moment I surrendered that, I stopped leaning on my own understanding, and I looked to you, it's not that things, everything just worked out magically, but, but I started to realize, oh God, I can trust you. And then, and then God even showed me a new path to take. And that's what I'm believing God's gonna do today. And so I just want you to sit on this for just a minute. I just want us to sit in a moment of prayer. Just say, God, here's the area. Here's what I trust you with. Here's what I need to trust you with. Remind me that you're trustworthy. Remind me that you're good. Remind me that you're strong. Hey, maybe you need to repent and just be honest with God and say, God, I've been trying to, I've been trying to do it all in my own understanding, and I'm sorry. Coming back to you, Jesus. Come on, I want you just to sit in this moment right now. The presence of God is here.
Thanks for watching today. If you'd like to continue the conversation, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. If our church has had an impact on you and you'd like to support all that Jesus is doing in this place, you can do so by going to rise-church.com slash give and select the giving option that best suits you. Thanks so much for joining us online and we hope you have a blessed week.